And now, your host, the voice of We Provoke Thoughts. And for that, we do not apologize. Good day. I am the voice of We Provoke Thought. We Provoke Thought is an organization and show that is the platform for those who have an opinion, idea, or educated information to share to the world. An outlet to voice your feelings and facts. Now today's show is We Are Under Duress, where we will be discussing a range of topics from transgenders to police brutality, and we won't waste time with it. So, but before we begin, we always like to give the audience an idea of the demographics in which we're reaching, so I pose this question to you. What city and state are you in? Brooklyn, New York. Ah, Brooklyn. Go Brooklyn, Brooklyn. (laughs) That's what's up, that's what's up. Brooklyn, BK in the house, everybody. Say again. That's that home of the really uh, harsh attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, unfortunately, <laughs> also home of the uh, uh, the the uh, I would say the genocide that's happening there with the uh, police and the law enforcement, the community in itself, uh, from Brooklyn to Manhattan, all parts of New York. I would say, along with the nation, Definitely. would you agree with that? Definitely. Yeah. It's um. They actually just hired this year about three thousand cops and. Um, New York City and usually I would walk around the city and you know you see a couple of cops here and there but now they're posted up on every block and at one time I saw about 50 cops on one block right across from uh, high school and I was and nothing was going on they were like oh we're just standing here you know so it's it's not only that there's a you know increase of the number of cops they they just hire but it's also the the crime as much as they say it's going down it's definitely not going down but I, I haven't seen numbers that agree with that and I've even um, had a conversation with an officer, a black officer, who stated that, um, you know, he was like, yeah, we admittedly do this for quarter. Now, today we're just basically hitting the streets and getting folks' informa- thoughts on the current climate between the citizens and the civil servants. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's a lot going on uh, culturally between civil servants and the general public. Uh, this is studying of sociology and criminology, and I can say that a lot of what I feel is going on is institutionalized. What are your thoughts on the current climate between the civil servants and the community? Currently, I think it's a pretty unhealthy relationship. Um, I just I listen to the radio a lot, and I hear that people are not feeling like they can trust um, the civil servants, and um, it just seems to be that people aren't feeling comfortable in their own town and city. We arrest and we do these crimes where we charge people with crimes for quota. And it's not because of what they're doing, but because, you know, they don't want to lose their job. Right, right, right. I I still see it as no excuse. No, 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 no. No. And and I would say that... uh, a lot of times, especially when you have 50 police officers, and I don't know, I didn't ask, I don't remember you saying if it was a high school or if it was just a school in general, but I don't, I believe that the presence of 50 police officers across the street from a high school is not more so for safety, but intimidation. Would you agree with that or do? how do yeah. you feel about that? Definitely. Um, even because I went to that particular high school, and when I was when I was in school, um, we had the cops around us, but you know they were they would uh, always give this feeling of tension. Like I would never feel comfortable walking on the same block as the cops, so to see 50 of them, and we already have this you know this uh, fear in the back of our minds that we could be the next person because you know everybody could be the next person, every black man or black woman could be the next person, right. matter of age. And right. so I, I definitely do believe that um, the presence of the uh, that many cops in one area, especially in that neighborhood. In particular, um, in any other neighborhoods filled with a majority of Africans, yeah, it, it gives us this, uh, it's like, a, you know, you better watch your back. Right, so stay right. Alone kind of thing. What do you think, or what are your thoughts on the current climate between the civil servants, the police officers, and the citizens of the community? Um, it's, it's a huge gap uh, due to a lot of things that I'm going to trust, uh, the police brutality and the community not coming, to, not gelling together, actually, you know, it could start with a lack of resources. Uh, basically, other counties not actually within the community that's serving our people for our people, so okay. they don't really understand our culture. Well, here, here's a question for you: Do you believe that the community still trusts the police officers, the law enforcement? Um, to a certain extent, to a very thin certain extent, due to they're still good cops out here, still good uh, 
you know, people within the community, but due to like the Freddie Gray and things happening like Ferguson and social media, we can't make it a huge impact. A lot of the people are scared. Right. They don't really trust the people. Because I mean, one being young, black, African-American involved with myself, I'm scared just walking, not knowing what can happen, anything can happen. Right. So right. I mean, it, it is a huge gap between the police and the community. They flex in their muscles. It's a, it's a form of saber rattling, as they would say, uh, and as a war terminology. Um, and, and I would also go as far as to say that even with the 50 plus or the, just the, the massive presence of uh, police officers in these communities, I think one of the bigger problems are that the faces of the police officers do not do not match the faces of the community would you agree with that or is that something different that's happening there well i think they're doing a little bit of the opposite and this is, um, the particular neighborhood in brooklyn that i'm speaking of is um was a majority of africans and now there's like due to um, you know neocolonialism you know justification that we have here right. um there's there's a lot of african cops and that even the advertisements themselves when they they're trying to um, you know recruit the all of African people. They're, right. they're not Europeans, they're not um, Asians, they're all African people. So I have noticed that a lot of the cops around, in, in particular areas of the train stations and by the schools, are black. And the, yeah, as I said, train stations are schools. Now, what do you believe or what are your thoughts on how the relationship between the communities and the civil servants, the police officers, can improve? Well, a really simple way I feel that that uh, the relationship can improve uh, on both ends is to really integrate law enforcement officials. Not not so much just you know walking the beat or you know making the patrols, but getting law enforcement uh, officials actually in the neighborhoods, being a part of the neighborhoods. It it'll build a lot more trust between the between the residents and the people that are living there, and the law enforcement. They're taking care of their neighborhoods on a day to day basis, not just catching criminals and you know enforcing you know arrests and all that do you think that the current uh communities are or shall i say the civil servants the police officers do you think that they reflect the majority of the communities in which they serve um not necessarily no okay do you believe that it's important that they do yes i definitely do and i was actually just thinking today that it would be a great way for them to get more involved would be to get walk around their communities and get to know people all right, so a little interaction between them. Yeah. And that used to take place a long time ago yeah. <laughs> where they were. Do you believe that the law enforcement, the police officers, civil servants, do you believe that they reflect the face of the community? No, I do not believe that. I believe, like I was saying earlier, they're getting these they're getting these law enforcement guys from all different parts of the different parts of the um, I was like the bus go by, different parts of the uh, city, different other communities. You can't really have some observing Baltimore City culture. They don't really understand the culture. It's the reason why people look a certain ways, like the Trayvon Martin, the guy, you know, he talking to him due to he had a hoodie on. I mean, it's cold outside. I have a hoodie on, but I mean, I'm a current grad student. I'm, I'm young. I'm African and black. So I feel as though you have someone in the community who understand the culture, understand the language, understand the movement, understand the lack of resources that we do not have, and understand why people act a certain way it kind of gelled the community together. Right. So that's why I feel like it's a huge gap between community and the uh, law enforcement because they don't really understand exactly what these people are going through on a daily basis, you know, and they just see us as criminals. So you do believe that it's important that the face of the police, the face of the law enforcement does reflect the community? Absolutely. How, how would they know who they serve and if not? So, uh, right. absolutely. But when it comes to patrolling the neighborhoods, no. Then I would say um, it wouldn't be um, European, but it would be more of an Asian or um, okay. I guess the, the so-called Latino um, population. All right. But, All it, right. It, so, but yeah, it's definitely a lot of so they try, it, it, it's, So there is a push or there is a move to, I mean, because I would think that uh, having the police officers, law enforcement, uh, or li I like to call them civil servants, uh, having their presence, I believe that it would behoove them to make sure that, you know, uh, the faces of those those uh, men and women that are serving to patrol and to protect and to uh, just basically uh, uh, interact with that community, it would behoove them to make sure that those those that do so match the faces of the people of that community. You would probably get a 
a more welcoming uh, presence, uh, um, less the uneasy presence, as you had mentioned uh, in younger years when dealing with uh, traveling from school, dealing with the police or what have you. And then you would probably have a, a much easier climate dealing uh, with the community working in joint efforts with the police officers. But unfortunately, uh, you've seen in the recent past, uh, and it hasn't ended, I mean, this has been going on for ages, where the police officers are finding uh, or we're finding that the police officers uh, it's almost as if they've been given a green light to kill any man woman and child that is uh black and you know it doesn't surprise me ever and this you know when when you're young you're as an african you're told not to trust the police officers and i I never had a reason to not trust them but it it just happened and this is something that's been in this, this um country, or I call it a co- corporation, but the United States, right. Um, right. it has it stems from, you know, slavery, the enslavement of Africans, where we had the, you know, the overseers, and we had the black overseers as well, and um, we the, the same, you know, they, they had the same goal to right. capture, you know, they, they, they had the slave captures, they had to, um, you know, take back the Africans for when they try to free themselves, and the same thing, we, although we're not running away from enslavement, we are still, you know, running away in a, in a psychological sense, like we do, we have such behaviors and whatnot, so they, they try to keep us um, back into the cages or back into the chains without it being physical. That's so I, I know for sure that somewhere in that guidelines that it says, hey, you get a badge if you, if you kill, a, kill a nigga today. You know, excuse right. my language, but... No, no, I, no, I no that, that speak freely. I, there has to be. So I actually, um... You know, a couple of months ago, I saw a photo of um, two officers who who um, killed, they murdered uh, some black um, boys and girls, and the, they had like a party, like a banner, really? like a congratulations. Wow. Yeah, so I have to find that, and I'll, I'll, when I can, I'll, um, you know, contact you again about this, but... Yeah, yeah because I would that, like to add that to this show. Yes, and another one where, you know, the drug money... And the drugs that they, they took from cartels and other gangs, they um they, there was like a, a ceremony. Whoever got the most drugs and money will win like an amount. They would get they they, they won like the, the the celebration. So there's a competition right. within you know. So they're doing this not only for the quota but also because they get badges and you know they get acknowledgments for this and it's, it's on their list. It's the secret video Inkster police didn't turn over. Officers laughing, celebrating, and fist pumping each other after Floyd Dent was beaten during a traffic stop. And only the defenders have the video police never wanted you to see. After the beating, Floyd Dent had broken ribs and was bleeding everywhere. And this new video shows what appears to be officers making fun of Floyd Dent instead of taking him to the hospital. Tonight, defender Kevin Deitch joins us live, and Kevin Inkster police never wanted this video getting out. Well, they never turned it over, and what's most concerning about this is they were laughing and joking and making fun of Floyd Dent, but they did it after the beating, but before anyone even considered taking Floyd Dent to see a doctor. Take a look. You pay their salaries, the job to serve and protect. In Inkster, this is how sworn paid police officers reacted to the beating of Floyd Dent. As they clean Floyd's blood off their hands and uniform with disinfectant, they appear to be laughing and joking, even celebrating with fist pumps. And then another puts his hand up. A moment later, he gets a fist bump too. Greg Roll is Floyd Dent's attorney. Because quite honestly, they're disgusting. Uh, They show officers making fun of Floyd. They show them congratulating each other for this beatdown. Well, the, in addition to that, I mean, uh, there's there's been documents uh, that have been uh, released where and also uh, incidents, incidents where um, uh, where you would have the police officer or excuse me, the police department uh, turn away certain uh, groups that were, uh, say, and I, and, I, and I can't put this any plain, but any plainer, but basically they had the IQs were too high. They were too smart. They were too intelligent, mm. uh, overqualified, if you will, in in a lot of areas yeah. uh, when it comes to that. And then it go, it, it makes you stop and think. Like, so you look. What are you looking for? I mean, are you looking for that uh, that 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 low key crim- criminal, if you will? I mean, the corruption is 
is real within the law enforcement, within the community, within the uh, the government or corporation, as you as you uh, so correctly stated. Um, how how can we how can we change the climate though uh, between the, the the community versus the civil servants? Well, um, I look to the to the ancestors of the the members of the Black um, Panther Party, and um, they use the law. And they use the law of self-defense. And I believe that um, that if we correct our behavior and not in the God, in their, their concept of you know what's correct behavior, but what it is in an African concept, you know, respecting each other as in respecting your African brother and respecting your African sister, and not doing anything to harm your family. And when we you know we actually get into one united and then protecting our own. We the the issues of I believe in of police brutality will lessen because I fully believe that the reason why the um you know the murders just keep increasing increasing went from twenty eight hours to every eight hours uh, a black man is killed by an, um, an officer it's because they believe that we won't do anything about it and we have yet to done anything about it right so I agree it's like it's like um. You keep poking somebody and poking somebody, and then it goes from a poke to a pinch, and then from a pinch to a slap, and then from a slap to a, to a punch, and then to a, a, a knife. And you don't do anything about it because they're just going to keep increasing and increasing and increasing their, their aggression. Is because it's like a game. I mean, it is a game. And yeah, they're, they're yeah. trying to taunt us, and, you know, instead we, we, uh, we, we think that... That it just just saying that it's bad is gonna change anything. Like we, the, the thing is, officers and um, other military forces, they know what they're doing is wrong, but it's not that they that they don't know. They just don't care. That's their job. Right. And yeah, I just um, I believe if you, if we start to protect our own and defend um, against these aggressions, you know, um, we can't just say protect our black women protect our children we have to actually protect them uh do you do you personally still have faith and trust in the the law enforcement that you have today i do so yeah for the most part um i think though that my race and uh, my position allows me to feel safer than some other people do in my city so i think i'm lucky in that way so um, All right. Now, do you feel as though that the civil servants, the police officers, law enforcement, whatever you want to identify them as, do you feel as though they reflect the face of their communities, or do you feel as though there's a disparity between them? I feel, and I, I'm not going to speak for everyone out there, but I think that a large number of these uh, civil servants do reflect their communities. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, there's a lot of civil servants out there that are out there doing their job day in and day out. We don't hear about them a lot. And then there's the bad apples that are also reflecting their communities. They're reflecting the bad apple community. They're coming in and they're showing that, you know, the wrong mindset can lead to really devastating outcomes. There's so many times that I see, um, you know, people being roughed over. The first thing I do is I go up to them. I see what's going on. You know, people say don't get into the business of another officer, but I'm not going to just right. say I can't put my, my black brother and my black sister and right. not do anything about it. And, of course, you can't just jump into anything because some issues, you know. But if you know this is some, like, a increase of aggression, like, unneeded, we don't right. need to take on your phone and record it. Right. Because you just right. sad because we didn't step in. And I, I don't think recording is going to, I don't think, um photographing this once we desensitize ourselves when we keep showing these damn videos of us getting stabbed up and killed and all this right. and, you know it, it gives us this, this sense of hopelessness because people are here are all over the place like oh what do we do like why don't they stop and like we're asking right. questions that has already has been answered they won't stop hey. until you know we stop it we need to um, unite on our own do you respect it? do you still have any type of faith in the justice system community as well as the law enforcement I do um I do. I believe it. Like I said, I believe it's still some good cops. Still, uh, some ju justice will be served. Uh, sometimes it costs a lot of money due to lawyers and everything like right. that. But I, I believe we still still have 
you know, a positive justice system to a certain extent. But um, it definitely needs some help. It definitely needs some work to be done. Indeed, indeed. Well, I thank you for your offer to time and sharing your thoughts. I appreciate that. Right. I mean, the world, the world sat and watched as Eric Garner's uh, life was just taken from him. I mean, you watched it from the from its inception to his 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 demise. I mean, the world sat and watched that, and nothing happened. I mean, we uh, we the family they did not receive justice for that. The world watched, and and as uh, San Sandra Blonde was mm -hmm. basically abused. I mean, she was ripped from the car and, and, and abused. And we saw as they tried to cover it up and, you know, just basically, you know, not even fool us. They didn't even try to do a good job at fooling us. Yeah. They said, look, this is what happened. You know, she she hung herself from some plastic and, uh, you know, deal with it. And that's that that is the uh, the sentiment, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and like you were saying, what what the problem is is that we're looking for the corrupt system to bring about justice for us and that's not going to happen right. and that's you know and that's why it's important but also the responsibility of the people to govern their communities as you say protect themselves protect their communities and this and to command the uh, sworn officers of the law to abide by the law themselves and hold them accountable when they fail to do so uh, yeah. Just, you know, a lot of times people feel as though, you know, the police are there to protect me. So, well, let me explain something to a lot of people out there. Um, this has been skewed throughout the time for a lot. Uh, you, you have the Supreme Court who has uh, repeatedly ruled that the police officers are uh, at all levels of the government have no duty to protect the citizens of this country. Uh, exactly. and, and, the, and the Supreme Court has ruled on that many a times. So at the end of the day, dialing 911 is not an opportunity that you have when you are uh, being robbed or when you find yourself in a threatening situation. It's your duty to protect yourself. And you're not to just lie there and allow yourself to be assaulted, whether it be by a citizen or a civil servant. That's why as much as I do not respect any um, westernized concept of government, while you're still under the government, you need to at least know the rules that the games, the games that they're playing, because you you know you're not gonna win if you don't know what the hell you're playing. So I, you know, it's like they tell you that we don't care about you, <laughs> and we're not here to save you, and you know, and yet we still um have a little it's that, it's that faith that we have that we have that you know, or maybe this time this person will actually do something about it and. I think we're so afraid of, um, like, helping ourselves. Like, I think we, we, we think we can't do it. You know, we'll always right. say, um, oh, well, we don't got the resources. We don't, we don't have this. And it's like, yes, we do. We have it. Yeah. And, and it's about, you know, putting it together. And if we don't have it, people take it all the time. You know, we, in my particular neighborhood, it's a, it's a neighborhood of um, so-called Jews. There's a lot of them, and they have, you know, their own ambulances, their own fire truck service, their own police service that they funded themselves and they protect themselves in their communities. You know, it's mm -hmm. not something that we can't do. Even in Chinatown and in, in Manhattan, the same thing. There's like a, there's an Asian community that they have their own police force. They have their own everything for us, everything that they need. And that, that's, as you said, a self-government. Like, we, we can do the same thing. Exactly. Once we realize that America, as we keep saying it, but I don't, we don't think we really believe it when we say it. America has never been about us and has never cared about us. And until we actually, you know, you know, embed that inside of us, then we'll realize that we don't need America. And um, looking into the authorities and higher ups in, in schools, you know, my uh, the president of my undergrad during this, this conference said, we were asking, we was like, how are we going to graduate on time? If the class is only offered every two years, he said, this is not about an education, it's about a business. So hmm. already hmm. through that, you know, this is a black man speaking. And um, just hearing that, I was just like, I mean, I knew it, but to hear it, right, you know, right, and, right. and that's just about, that was just about that. But if that's how he feels about, you know, my education, I doubt, because if, if it is an educational institution and he doesn't even care about my education, why would they even take the time to make a you know, step forward to care about your safety? They don't care about our safety. You know, they care about our dollars that we, we give in. So 
I think we need to, you know, not, I'm not saying step away from these institutions, but we need to create our own institutions and, and stop depending on them to protect us from these things. That's from right. These, Tulsa, um, Oklahoma. <laughs> right. I liken it to the fact that if, uh, in your home, I can't come to your home and tell you how to run things in your house, can I? I, I can't. Cannot. I cannot. And as long as this country is not seen as our home uh, by the eyes of the, the dominant society, then never will we be able to sleep comfortably in this 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 country here. Though I do believe, and I think this is fun, you know, when I hear those uh, those chants uh, go back to Africa and all this other stuff, I believe, <laughs> and I and, and and tell me if you agree with me. I believe that if every black person tomorrow was to jump on the ship to go back to Africa, they would stop that ship and try to sink it they, they, because. Mm-hmm. This country would not, and I, and, and, and I will say this emphatically, this country would not, cannot, will not survive without us. They, exactly. you know, this, 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 this world, this planet resonates because of our vibrations. And, and I, I think that, uh, you know, when they say that, they, they don't really mean that. And for those that do mean it, they, they, those are the ones that don't really know the true power of the melanated people. So, I mean... Even when that is said, uh, you got to understand that uh, they don't want us to leave. They don't want us to go because they wouldn't survive without us. We are needed. Uh, They feed from our energy. And I believe that once we as a people, the melanated people, recognize the true power that we possess and we unite the way that we're supposed to unite, uh, I believe that the power, the, the, the paradigm would shift. As you said, until we realize how powerful we are, because, you know, we're, we're the beginning of everything. And this is stuff that, that is scientifically proven. Like, we know this. And even, even uh, you know, black matter, blackness in, in science itself is imperative to the, you know, the, the survival of the universe. It holds the universe together as we hold the country together. We hold the whole world together. Blackness is just that powerful. And, you know, we can't just keep saying, I love my melanin and not really understand what it is. It's not just your pigment. You know, right. it's everything. It's it's powerful. That's why they're taking. That's why they're killing us. That's why the sixty-five thousand black women missing and, and over a million black men missing. That's why they're taking our bodies and our organs. You know, and and they're taking the the, the melanin and they're, they're putting it in pills. But that's what we see. You see, ah, uh, they they have melanin transplants now. They need yeah. this. They need us. And that's why you know people keep saying they keep calling us. We're gonna we're gonna die off. No, because if we die off, they die off. And because of that parasitic behavior they don't want to die off wow so they want to keep right. us under uh population that's why they have this eugenics program you know to keep you know we can't keep uh they have, we have our black men in prison um black men unemployed we have our our um you know this, this uh other sources of um, eugenics uh, just the increase of um as nearly full of junior would say anti-sexuality and the promotion of the imbalance of um, feminine and masculine energies. Like this, these are all sources of eugenics, all types of eugenics, you know, uh, uh, just promoting, um, I guess, being single or just promoting the fact that you, you, you're too poor to have a child, so don't have a child, have an abortion instead. Promoting all these ideas is, you know, keeping the population low um, at, at the minimum they want and also just also promoting the idea that we should hate each other. So that we engage in our own genocide where we kill ourselves. The people don't like to see right. saying, Oh, don't talk about black on black crime. No. The reason why black on black crime is a myth is because it's not it's not tied to any other race on race crime. But the fact of the matter is we're still doing it. And right. it doesn't stop. You know, because there's gonna be a lot of naysayers, there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna wanna to dispute that, but at the end of the day the you know, the numbers don't lie. That's the one thing you cannot, uh, you can lie about them, but you, the, the numbers themselves don't lie. So, and that brings me to another area of discussion that I wanted to close with, emasculation of men. Um, why, why don't you chime in and give me your, your views on that? Well, for one, I believe that the emasculation of men is, you know, it is true. I, I know a lot of people say that it, it does not happen. And I do believe that both black men and black women, um, promote this and a lot has to do with our media social media social media as great as it is is destroying us because you know we're getting the message across but it's um we're getting the wrong messages across and 
the, I actually spoke about this before about the nice match with a man, and the one thing that I brought up is, you know, we norm we we accept what it is to be normalized. Like we um, get the message, someone gives us this message, and we say yes, this is okay. And I'm, I'm speaking about um, in particular. Um, I believe in the, in the balance of masculine and feminine energies because both men and both women have both energies, but it's a balance right. that we need. And I've, I've seen that, you know, um, from the beginning of the time when it comes to black um, entertainment, that a black man has to feel in order for him to make the most money, he has to dress up in the wig. Uh, well, I think I think where I am in my career now, you know, uh, I'm I'm financially stable, so. You know the the roles that I'm that I'm able to choose now. You know, they can be good roles. They can be smarter roles. I don't have to take certain movies. So it's all about the movie making sense and the role making sense. If it's something that can catapult me into a different, you know, level of stardom or, or take me someplace else, then yes. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm, I don't want to do things just to do them. Dave Chappelle, another great comedian, said that you know in the industry. They tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with with scripts and and is that something that you know you wouldn't do? You know for, for... Uh, I definitely haven't ran into to put on the dress. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to be challenged, so you know. I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. I you look said good no to that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm going to look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you got to know that you're a brand. I'm yeah. a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brand can be diminished, and, and you don't you don't want that to happen. So, you know, protecting my brand is, is definitely a priority. All right. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why are all these brothers going to wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. They come in, it's the writer comes in, I think he's the writer, he's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail, so he disguises you as a prostitute, <laughs> and he put this dress on, and it, huh, what, the prostitute, nah, I'm not doing that, I don't feel comfortable with it, that should have been in the discussion, what, you don't feel comfortable with it, I mean, it's a hilarious bit, all the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah. And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this? A uh, broke back mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> and wear the wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes. Come on, David would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. all the comics that I've seen. Man, you know, strong. Brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later. The whole new scene, hot damn, how did you write the scene so fast? <laughs> you know, it's like, so you got to take a stink. It's not Turkson. The new pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee, Kavenjane <laughs> Wallace. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I don't think anyone saw this one coming. Kevin Janae Wallace, of course, the first African American, the first female, and first child pope. And what is the new pope doing? 
Uh, Pope Covenjene is lifting her arms into her signature muscle man pose. Mm, truly adorable and everyone loves it. But it looks like Pope Covenjene is doing the Dougie. Mm. And Turkson is loving it. Uh. Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say, go, Popey, go, Popey, go. And it appears as if Pope Covenjene is about to speak. Ki hominem. <laughs> this, of course, translates from the Latin to who demand. <laughs> Ego sum hominem. <laughs> Which means I'm demand. <laughs> and the arms are back up for another victory lap. A real grand slam for the oh. Vatican. Pope is riding a cardinal like a horsey. Oh, oh. oh, look at that. Wow, I could watch that all day, huh? How about that? Horsey rides in the Vatican. That's got to be a first, but probably isn't. Yes. Well, she is cute as hell. Mm. But is she enough to turn the fortunes of this beleaguered church? Is the Pope Catholic? She is not, and I don't think anyone cares. <laughs> Talk shows more than I you look said good, no to that. <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. And that um, promoted and encouraged the behavior we see now with the Vine videos, the Instagram videos, you know, with um, black men and black um, boys dressing up in wigs, acting like women, um, pretending to be homosexual, or, um, you know, whatever it may be, and then we laugh at it as if. Right. As if it's just comedy, but it's not just comedy, because comedy is life, and comedy has always been life. And you know, when we uh, when we keep laughing at things, we 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 tell the public this is positive because we're laughing, so it has to be positive. But now it's okay mm. for my little five-year-old to wear a wig and shake his ass on TV, so we can all laugh at it. And then we wonder why he acts out later on, years you know years from now, why he's doing the things he's doing. And the thing about the other thing about the masturbation of men is it, it's how we, you know, black women and black men, especially black women, encourages that we, um, as I said, we promote this whole black man in the wig um, kind of thing. We don't, some, you know, I, I'm not going to say all, because I, I know I love me a very masculine man. I love a, a aggressive man. Um, I love a man who plays his role that right. um, it may be. But we, uh, we're getting this, this uh, picture that we need to, our men can't be as strong as they want to be. They can't be men. They have to um, be more feminine than masculine. And every man has a feminist side, but his feminist side should not, um, you know, be more than his masculine. His masculine should not be more than his feminine. And we, because America knows that the easiest way to destruct a nation is through the woman. So as um, as the the nation of gods of earth, the five percenters, they like to say, you know, um, he's the, the black seed. So. He has to go through the seed to, to create um, to create life. So we go into the black woman to um, to make her feel that she's superior to her man, and that's the introduction of feminism, which I you know I've, I've dwelt in it because it's so confused. Because I you know I'm a black woman and I see how misogynistic our black man can be, but that's because they've been indoctrinated to do such acts. Because black man was never like that, and I'm not gonna give him an excuse and saying he's allowed to do that because he's not. You know, right. we should respect each other, but at the Indeed. same time, we have to know that this is not um, his behavior. He was learned and he was conditioned, just like you're learned, and you know, just like I'm learning, conditioned to uh, act a certain way. And you know, black women, um, black men, and black women have always have this the shared uh, breadwinner thing. And, you know, generally, uh, as, as known as the, the black man is the provider and the protector. And if he is um, killed, or if he is put in jail or if he doesn't have the opportunity to provide because he, he is in jail or something else happens and he can't get a job because he is a black man and the black woman, she makes 90% of his wages anyway, so she's the head of the household now. And, and, it's, and unfortunately and, and, and essentially we, um, we, we put it in their faces like, oh, you ain't got no job anyway. You know, we say statements like that. And, we, um, and as I said, we don't do it intentionally. But because of the fact that we have been placed on this, this false pedestal by white America and white, um, white corporations, we, um, re we remove the task of the man. So now he has, now he feels emasculated because once you take away the man's ability to provide and protect, um, then you take away his, his, you take away a lot of his manhood. Not all of it, of course, 
but a lot of right, it. Right, right. And yeah. so, um, you know, it's just, it's, and I said the whole thing about, um, so let me let me really ask you, like, let yeah. me ask you this question. Uh, do you feel as though the the acts such as uh, uh, the transgendering um, male, do you feel as though that threatens, uh, as well as the the homosexual uh, um, community, the 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 gay community, if you will, uh, do you feel as though that challenges the black woman? I don't believe, um, uh, uh, and I, and I, you know, I don't mean to offend, but I don't, I don't believe something that's not original can, you know, ever threaten original. So what I do believe is that it, it threatens the nation as a whole, um, right. not necessarily the black woman per se. I, I, I know there's, there's cases where, um, there's, there's like there's times where, you know, you see a lot of black men there, uh, Making these uh, transgendered people, whatever, um, their their crushes, their the, the women they like, and or or they don't even know they're transgendered, but all the women right. that they do like, especially like these 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 models, a lot of them are not women, um, not you know cisgendered as they like to say here in America. I don't use that language. I don't really care about that. Cause I feel like that's right. BS. But um, you know, yeah. so now we're promoting the idea of that you have to not be a woman for me to you know and then they're being brainwashed i don't think it threatens us per se but i do believe that anti-sexuality as i said is fully space to be threatens the black nation as a whole because the more you engage in non really non-reductive kind of ways of relationships and yes you can adopt and all that new sciences that they do so you have a child but it's not right. in nature you know and i believe mm -hmm. in doing anything in nature because earth is very she is our earth is angry because we're we are like mad scientists like I, I call people frankenstein because that's what it is you're created in the lab and <laughs> and it's not your fault i mean it is well some it of is. it like, is i mean a lot of these are choices that these people make for themselves which is going to lead me to my next question but go ahead I, the reason i'm saying it's not their fault altogether because i do believe in the mass condition of people because you know we we're slowly at first it started with race you have to accept people for who they are as their color. Um, you know, accept them for their gender, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, even though that doesn't happen. Then they said, we have to accept the homosexuals. It's okay that they're gay. And then they made a clear difference that identity and sexuality are not one of the same. I get that. Mm -hmm. And I completely agree. So then mm -hmm. we have this new idea that, hey, we should all love each other. And by the way, we should all love people who, you know, don't necessarily feel comfortable in their bodies. So now we have um, Orange is the New Black with one of the most popular characters that transgendered. I don't know that person's name. I don't really care for the person's name, to be honest. But they promote right. that. That's a black man right there. That's the first. That was the first image for me. I mean, I've seen it before, but that's the first time it's been so publicized and that even black men and black women are watching and they're, it. They love it. And people love right. it. And I'm like, don't you guys see that they're, they're giving us this message? And then they come with the Bruce Jenner. You know, so it, it's like a slow, like, it's like a slow, uh, that, by the way, it's so funny because he actually just tweeted that he's, he said, oh, love you, daddy. Like, oh, love, love you, daddy. Like, it does like, he makes confused because so they're saying, <laughs> yeah, he was something like, he, he still referred to him as daddy. So, you know, and I don't really care about celebrities, but it's the fact that it's right. telling us, hey, love people for who they are, but they are running the game on us. A lot of this is, um, I, I've seen some things about, uh, you know, how homosexuality is linked to the chemicals that we eat, poisons that we have, the GMO foods, because of course, GMO is, you know, genetically modified, so they're genetically modifying our DNA as well, because whatever you eat right. is what you become it. So right. if you're being poisoned right. with, um, you know, imbalances of chemicals, and then you start to feel, you know, or and then plus when you're constricted and you only have to be um, super masculine, super feminine, and people are forced into, okay, so since I can't be a man because of this, blah, 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 and now I have to be a woman. And it's, and yes, I do agree that people do um, make the choice, but where did the choice come from? Like, who implanted that idea first? Right. And, and then really they make that choice. And to support that, I mean, um, uh, from a from a medical or from a uh, agricultural standpoint, 
I mean, the, the foods themselves, I mean, you have um, a product such as soy, and I, I've, I've spoken about this in some of my other, show, my other shows, where the uh, soy itself, I mean, first of all, soy was uh, supposed to be an industrial uh, product. It was used industrially. Soy in the body, it's an estrogen, estrogen mimicker. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that along with the bisphenol A, you'll find that in a lot of the plastic products that we use. And then these people, you know, these folks, you know, blind, sleeping, whatever, they like to put their, their foods, cook them in these plastics, cook them in these, uh, these, these containers and these other, other pieces of uh, cookware that is inundated with all these different type of chemicals that are seeping into your foods. Your foods themselves are being inundated with uh, all of these chemicals. Some of them you can't pronounce. A lot of them you should be able, you should look them up because, I mean, when you see the same chemicals that are in your uh, roach spray or, <laughs> you, mm-hmm. or yep. uh, other poisons or so, uh, your paint, you know, things like that in your foods or not really food, but in, in, the, in the products in which you consume, you know, red flags should be red. And then, you know, again, with the foods and all of that, I mean, when your body produces too much testosterone, what does it do to kind of balance that? It has to produce uh, estrogen and vice versa. So, you know, our bodies are being um, the test tubes for these these animals out here, these, these mad scientists, as you said. Uh, and that leads me to this question here. What are your thoughts on the uh, popularity of the uh, of physical augmentation amongst women? Oh, man, <laughs> so it's it's, just, it's so funny to me. It's so funny because like, you know I'm a, I'm a I'm a tiny girl. I'm a small um, small for an African. You would think as a West African, I would have certain features. And it, it's just it's funny that uh, what black women are doing is what they have naturally. Like the, the j- just like the the um, waist trainers that Europeans use that because they admire the shape of the, of the African woman. Because right. of the fact that you know she was built that way, um, because of where of her environment, that like she has to be built that way. It wasn't something sexual, right? It's just something biologically. And and the fact that we um, promote these bodies, one where where you know where you know we're saying, hey, it's okay to not necessarily love who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, we say self love, but then self love doesn't mean change yourself until you love yourself it means right. accept you as who you are and it just it, one it just increases this whole insecurity that black women have like we as much as we say we don't need no man we don't care what people say like everything we do is because of um of everything like we don't just do it for no reason that was the case <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, no, that's my that's been my argument for 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 a long time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you mean, know, I'm whenever I, whenever I try to whenever I try to put that out there, man, oh my God, you can imagine. I don't dress this way for you, and I don't do this to make you happy, and you know, and you know, I just throw my hands up, just back up, like, all right, yeah, because you know, I got dressed today, wanted to just look at myself all day. Nah, I want you to look at me. I want to attract you. That's the reason why I do the things that I walk the way I walk I you know I my you know when I you know when I'm talking with my boys and versus when I'm talking to a young lady my voice may drop an octave or two you know I may you know rumble the walls <laughs> a little bit <laughs> so let's keep it real but I'm sorry I didn't mean I, I, you just you you just made me happy just now but go ahead go ahead finish this so you, no, you say no, that I mean- because I mean, if that was the case, we we wouldn't be buying the things that we buy. Like people say they like it because they like it, but no, it's because it's publicized as something that people like that they are attracted. Right. The fact that that um, you know, we get the whole black men saying that they love the whole natural thing. We have that, but then we and that's when social media is so is so funny. But then we have these insecurities where you see black men promoting the video vixen kind of look. You know, right, right, and now right. I, now people, little girls looking at this, and they feel they need to do this. Like I, I'm, I'm on YouTube. There's a, a girl. She's 18 years old, and she just got um, she got a, a breast augmentation because she said that she doesn't like having um small breasts. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> like, what? What's, what? Why is it right. you or for someone else? Right. That, right. that thought was put into your head, and I, I think that um, I don't. I don't agree with it. I mean, uh, we had uh, what the uh, anniversary of the Million Man March on uh, 1010. 
where uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke about a uh, nationwide uh, boycott for Black Friday and uh, all the other holidays to follow. Um, do you believe that that's an answer to, um, to or the one of the steps in the right direction? How do you do you believe that it will be successful? And if not, or if so, what will be the next step, next stage? Oh, it's funny. I was thinking about this. I actually just went, came from an event about black economics, and I do believe that boycotting is a key because um, although um, it, the economy is not going to completely remove ourselves from the state that we're in, it will put us in a, in a different situation, right? So um, I do believe that, one, we have to boycott, but not only do we have to boycott, we have to support. And support doesn't necessarily mean recreate black capitalism, because capitalism is capitalism regardless. And capitalism right. is not the, it's a, it's, a, it's a greedy system of profit. That's the only thing it's about. Not about serving and not about, you know, actually building a community, but for profit. For, for an illusionary um, wealth, which is the dollar, which I believe is, uh, is first of all, it's going, it's, it's losing its value. I just wanted to point that out. China about to make some things happen. Everybody keep awake on that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Definitely. Yes. But what we need is um, we need to have a communal type of um, ec economy because we're, we're so conditioned to believe that the only way we can we can survive and thrive is through capitalism. When we can create our own economy, and we were speaking about the bartering system, and I know it's so backwards, but it works. My very last question that I love to pose to uh, all of my guests, and it it doesn't need a profound answer, but nonetheless, I believe it is a good question to ask. If you had the power, what would you do with it? <laughs> I'll remove those that are oppressing um, the original people of this planet. Completely. Okay. All right. Com completely remove, of remove. their power. Completely of their power. Completely of whatever that they they, they find worthy. So right. that um, whatever that may be, you know, take it as you, as you wish. But right, right. Um, return back to natural state because we were never supposed to be where we're at right now right remove them well look i appreciate you i want to thank you for allowing we provoke thought to be the platform for you to express your thoughts and views uh and for those that were listening uh for any of the books that were spoken about and any of the uh research that was spoken about i'm going to have that in the subject matter below along with the videos to follow along with any of the information that we have and as always we do ask that you follow us on all of our social media network what networks for whether it be uh, facebook twitter instagram and our website www.weprovokethought.com but again i want to thank you for allowing we provoke thought to be the platform for you to express your thoughts and views and i'm going to say goodbye to you on the other end this call has been recorded